Dallas-based pastor Reverend Frederick Haynes III stepped down this week from Rainbow Push, the Rainbow Push Coalition. He spent less than three months on the job before his very abrupt exit. Yeah, Reverend Haynes offered no explanation as to why he's stepping down. He only said in a statement that he will continue to, to fight for liberation. So very few details, no reason given. And a lot of questions. His departure left many wondering uh, what happened and why so suddenly uh, no one has been more outspoken than journalist and CEO of Black Star Network, Roland Martin. Mr. Martin, we appreciate you joining us this morning to talk about it. Glad to be here. So, first of all, if anyone has not seen the video that you posted in response to this and the information that you shared, what's your thoughts on this coming so abruptly, so quickly, and also with very little details about why? Well, keep in mind, uh, I've known both parties for quite some time. I served as uh, executive editor of the Chicago Defender and general manager. Uh, from, uh, so, so I know Reverend Jackson well, knew him before then in Rainbow Push. And in Dallas, uh, I was a member uh, of Friendship West Baptist Church, where Reverend Frederick Douglas Haynes III uh, is the senior pastor. He's also my Alpha Phi Alpha fraternity brother. So know them very well. Was very excited. Uh, by him coming on to become uh, the president and CEO following the footsteps of Reverend Jackson. But here's what everyone always talks about. Uh, that was, uh, was Reverend Jackson, were the folks involved with Reverend Push going to allow someone to actually take the reins and lead the organization? And I think what you had here, you had frustration uh, that he was not actually able to have the autonomy to, to properly lead as president uh, and CEO. There were oftentimes he and I would talk and he would say, hey, let me run this by Reverend, let me run, the, run this by Reverend, which I found to be, uh, you know, somewhat, somewhat interesting. Again, when you're the president and CEO, uh, and so I think you had that that friction there. Uh, that that yeah, he was president and CEO, but did not have the full authority to actually do uh, the job. And I think uh, one of the things that's important here, we talk about transitions uh, of organizations. The NAACP, LDF, Legal Defense Fund, they had a very smooth transition from Sherilyn Eiffel to Janae Nelson. When you talk about Reverend James when he goes from being senior pastor uh, of Salem Baptist Church. I was a member there as well. From him step, uh, having Charlie Dates take over and him step away. Uh, you, you can't continue to, frankly, have the reins of an organization when you turn it over to somebody else. Uh, and I think that's really what you... That's really that's really what you had here. Uh, there's no bad blood. There's, there's no you know anger. But I really think uh, it's an issue that Rainbow Push has to contend with, and that is how. What is your plan forward to continue the legacy of Reverend Jackson? Are you going to be a legacy organization where you look back and all things great things he did, or do you keep moving forward with fighting for social justice? Yeah, interesting there. Uh, interesting points too. Uh, did, did the pastor out of uh, uh, Dallas? I mean, what, was there any? Is there anything financial? Uh, people are thinking, oh, maybe there's something no. more to this no. story. And, no. and the other thing, okay, no. if there's no nothing no. there, an, another question for it's you. Not. It's, oh, it's, no, it's, no, it's, it's not. It's it's not. I get that. It, 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 I have listen, a second again. question. Yeah. Uh, okay. A follow-up question. So no, nothing financial. But you said uh, in your no. retort yesterday. Uh, that, you know, a lot of the black population is now, they've moved south. It's, it's Atlanta. It is Dallas. And if, if, if Rainbow Push wants to continue its legacy and be big like it has been, be bold, make changes, it needs, it needs to include uh, the major metropolises and go, you need to go where the money is if you're going to raise money for things yeah. like this. That's something you said, right? Can you expound on that? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, absolutely. Because again, uh, Chicago is what was the epicenter for quite some time. Uh, but the reality is Chicago no longer, for the longest, Chicago had the second largest uh, black population outside of New York City. Mm -hmm. But that changed several years ago, and now it's the Atlanta area. And the reason I made that point is, again, you have four, four different entities that, that, that makes up Rainbow Push Coalition. But the reality is everything was driven by by the again, the big personality, the leadership of Reverend Jackson. So and that's fundraising. Uh, that's your uh, PR, everything, your policy. Well, now the question is, how do you now position yourself for the future? And so 
uh, you, you're not going to have that. The reality is at 82 years old, uh, he's he's incapacitated uh, via Parkinson's. He's not the reverend he used to be, which now means you now have to have a new leadership model. And so they are going to have to uh, deal with that. Many people thought that Reverend Haynes brought the vitality and the energy, a very charismatic pastor in, in that way. But the question then is, how do you still lead an organization? Uh, and so this is what they're going to have to grapple with. They cannot continue to be solely built around Reverend Jackson. You can't. And so organizations have to continue to sort of build and go beyond that. I've run three black newspapers. What I'm talking about right here, we have seen this in black churches. We've seen this at HBCUs. We see this in other organizations. And so this is really a critical decision. Uh, my understanding, they're going to have new, you know, they'll be announcing new leadership very shortly. But even with that, are they going to be able uh, to, re to, to really rebuild themselves? Because I can tell you right now, Rainbow Push Coalition, and it's no disrespect, and I love Reverend Jackson dearly. They are no longer considered one of the major civil rights organizations in this country. They're not. And so you now have to make a decision. Do you want to stay there? And that requires, frankly, a change in operational style. And that's the jury is out on that. So it's really based upon who's going to be the person uh, who takes the reins and will they actually be able to properly lead the organization, have the autonomy to make the decisions on resources, on staffing, on future focus, on issues and policy, things along those lines. Those are all a lot, a lot of the outstanding questions. All right, Roland Martin, host of Roland Martin and Filter, thanks so much for joining us on the show and just sharing some of your perspective and just insight, knowing both sides. Thank you.